Hello and welcome to Canon Man TV. My name is Conor McLeod and in this CBD industry update, I go over a joint statement relating to a very positive meeting between the Home Office and Canabroid industry leaders and stick around to the end to see how you can document your CBD experience and how you can help to contribute towards building impartial and scientific evidence based on the efficiency of CBD. Now then, let's talk cannabis. Now, this joint statement is obviously extremely important um, largely because of the fact that it shows an indicator of the progress that's being made as a result of hard-working groups within the cannabis industry. So there are five groups that have essentially taken it upon themselves to spearhead um, change, in particular change that's relating to the CBD industry. But as a result of the CBD industry new regulation, they've had to take it on board the hemp industry the hemp and hemp products, hemp food products, which have been on the market for over 20 years. So I'm going to read this um, joint statement here that's been provided by the Scottish Hemp Association, Northern Ireland Hemp, British Hemp Alliance and Cannabis Trades Association and also Unite Hemp and uh, you see exactly why the progress has been made um, and, and you see the level of interaction and the activity that's been produced as a result of um, as a result of these, these, these industry leaders being aware of what the consumer is really looking for. So I'll just read over this and, um, and, and you'll take the information from it. So Joint statement, positive meeting with the UK Home Office signals change in the cannabis industry for the largest and most diverse representation. On Wednesday the 31st of March, the British Hemp Alliance, Cannabis Trade Association, Northern Ireland Hemp Association, Scottish Hemp Association and Unite Hemp met with the Home Office to find workable and industry-centric solutions for regulators, public health and the UK industry. Now this statement is the 1st of April, so that's yesterday. And the meeting was on the 31st of March, which was two days ago. So this is right on the nose. This um, this information is coming hot off the press, essentially. We would like to thank the Home Office for their swift response to our call for a meeting. Speaking on behalf of over a 1,000 hemp and CBD businesses, the largest and most diverse group in the UK, we discussed the various irregularities facing the hemp industry. These include controlled substances naturally present in trace amount in, food, in hemp foods, import licences and farming. Some of the bullet points from Mike Barnes' up-and-coming white paper, UK Medicinal Cannabis and the CBD Market, were also shared in advance of the pending release. I intend on covering that in depth, um, the white paper, when it's released. I think it's got a couple of weeks yet before it's been released, but um, don't worry, stick around on the channel and you'll see that I'm going to provide an in-depth review of uh, what the, the white paper is um, proponing, what, what the white paper is essentially promoting for the next stages of cannabis in the UK. The Home Office representative acknowledged that the one milligram issue was not relevant to hemp products with the exempt definition being intended for research purposes, not for human administration. Now the one milligram issue is central in the CBD regulation at the moment where any product that has any more than one milligram of THC is essentially not valid um, and that's what the issue was going to be that if this was the case then is the hemp industry going to have to completely um, realign as a result of this and what this is saying is that the hemp industry will not be accounted for in the same manner as the CBD, the, the, the now newly established CBD industry. Hemp food products have been in the UK market for over 20 years with trace amounts of controlled substances present and they agreed that there would be new regulations required to accommodate this growing industry. We were able to preview the results to date from the Great British CBD survey. Most of you have actually filled that in. I thank you very much for being active and, and actually filling that in. A lot of the comments in the below have indicated such. Consumers consistently voted in preference to full spectrum or whole plant products, which is expected, really. Everybody, the, the, the people that are aware of the consumer demand are aware that they want full spectrum products and, and um, from whole plant. With the requirement of regulated food, the Novel Foods Authorization, and synthetic cannabinoids entering the food supply for the first time, our proposal for mandatory labelling for classification of contents was well received, which is a huge step. Um, it's still not to be, it's not been officially passed yet, this is obviously the first meeting, but what this, what this signals is that the Home Office is on board with the mandatory labelling and the requirements that are needed to meet consumer demand. As part of the Home Office review for changes required to law and regulations, including the Misuse of Drugs Act, we will see an immediate improvement to the future of the UK hemp and cannabis industry, which is tremendous. And then it says at the bottom here, we'll be submitting our evidence to the um, Advisory Council for the Misuse of Drugs. And this is the part at the bottom where, the, where you, the individual, can contribute towards um, collecting CBD impartial scientific evidence. So at the bottom of this joint statement that they've provided, where the link will be, I'll put the link in the description box below, there is a consumer cannabidiol products call for evidence. And when you click on this call for evidence, it's from 
the advisory council on the misuse of drugs call for evidence on cannabinoids and cbd products which is this is on the 26th of march so this is at the beginning of the week maybe at the end of last week and it says here the advisory council on the misuse of drugs has been commissioned to provide impartial and scientific evidence on the acceptable levels of constitu con constituent cannabinoids and cannabidiol products marketed as consumer products this is obviously going to include all cannabidiol uh, all uh, cannabinoids Essentially, what the advisory council are asking for is scientific evidence of first-hand accounts of what CBD actually does. And what, they're, what they're, they've provided here, seven questions, it says here, we are specifically seeking evidence on the following questions. Your written submission can provide responses to some or all of the questions. So the, the commission refers to the cannabinoids, so this is question one, are there are any further phytocannabinoids which should be considered other than delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, CBN, and THCV? These are obviously the, the controlled substances cannabinoids. So are, what they're asking for is there any other cannabinoids which should be considered other than delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, CBN, and THCV? Question two, at what dose would each of these cannabinoids cause a psychoactive effect in humans? Are there any potential harmful effects at these doses? What are the conditions that precursors of cannabinoids such as Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol acid, cannabinolic acid, might be transformed into controlled substances. So that's essentially related to temperature. What situation could you have it so that you have a, a product that has um, no trace amounts of THCA or Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, and through circumstance degradation um, ends up transforming. Um, metabolizing into uh, THC essentially in what situation and essentially you're looking at temperature that's essentially what that, that is there what is the combined level of uh, and bear in mind if there are any other additional things please again add into the comments below and inform me because I'm I'm also just learning this stuff as I go along what is the combined level of the psycho what is the combined level of the psychoactive cannabinoids that would not produce a psychoactive effect in other words maximum combined dose of active ingredients given the standard use of CBD products so what that's asking for is you take away the um, controlled substances at what level will there be a psychoactive response with the additional primary cannabinoids such as cbd cbg and the like cbc um, question five are you aware of any evidence of cbd products causing adverse reactions or harms which might be attributable attrib attributable to cannabinoid impurities if so please attach such evidence so essentially adverse effects to cbd ingestion or any other cannabinoid ingestion but the product, the, the prior, obviously prioritizing CBD here because it's the the precursor um, cannabinoid for the industry. That's essentially what we're dealing with. For product, for producers of CBD containing products for supply to consumers, what certification of quality of CBD extracts from raw materials do you require or expect? So essentially, that's um, for the producers. What kind of certification would you expect from the individuals that are producing the cannabis? In the self or in the hemp plant, so the farms, the in um, in Europe or or, or other places, um, what level of certification would you would be minimally acceptable, um, in order to take the product and, and provide it to consumers? For in, in question seven, finally, for which controlled phytocannabinoids are the reference standards available or likely to become available in the near future for their use and testing? So essentially, what additional phytocannabinoids are on the verge of also being used and applicable in the industry like um cbg seems to be the most it seems to be the newest one besides cbd um cbg seems to be relatively predominant a lot of products are now containing cbd uh, cbg i should say um so that would most likely be relevant there so yeah this is a and then what at the very end what you do once you've filled out these questions is um it says please note that owing to the specific focus of this ministry ministerial commission the um advisory council will only consider information relevant to these questions so if you just throw over subjective experience not relating to any of these seven questions it's going to be disregarded if you'd like to submit your written evidence please submit it to the secretariat at advisory council with misuse of drugs and the email is provided i'll also put it on the link right now um so what essentially for anybody that's still that's relatively confused at what they're asking for here they're asking for first-hand accounts of cbd experience and cbd use they're asking for that from everybody they're asking from that for people that are producing it, people that are supplying it, and people that have had first-hand accounts of using it. And um, any form of periphery cannabinoid knowledge seems to be relevant here. That's they, they're also it seems that it's kind of implied that they also um, when they, when they're asking for 
um, further phytocannabinoids, um, additional con conditions, controlled cannabinoids, and, and the like. That's what they're asking for here. Any and all knowledge relating to um, cannabidiol products so that they can have a sound body of impartial evidence. Now, the thing to remember here is this is terrific. Like, you, this is brilliant news. We want this. We want there to be um, a, a very proactive um, industry that's, that's looking to be established on the grounds of the individuals that are actually active in the industry. So what's happened here is the Advisory Council has been formed. The Home Office, Home Office representative has been called. They have met with these five, the five um, cannabinoid industry leaders that I previously mentioned. And, and results have been the consequence of that. No, the results being that this is a call for evidence. The, the other results of the, the, the meeting, as I've mentioned, is the fact that they're going to seriously consider mandating labelling for classification of contents, which means we're going to, it seems to be the initial steps that we are going to have synthetic um, notification on the side of the, the product. Um, another positive step is that they are going to reevaluate the regulations surrounding the hemp um, product food products, um, which is which is also and which is also in alignment with the CBD um, emerging CBD market, and the one milligram issue, obviously, as as I've just mentioned, is applicable to that. What's not mentioned in here is that they they're also going to strongly consider a one percent THC maximum for individuals that are producing hemp. So at the moment in the, in the UK, when individuals are able to pursue a hemp license successfully, and um, they're able to go through the arduous tasks of actually getting one. The maximum THC threshold is 0.2%, um, which really is non-attainable because climactic factors um, or seasonal changes often make it that that 0.2% in the, the in the hemp product and the hemp plant that's been grown will end up reaching 0.35 or 5%, 0.5% um, THC content. So that's going to be then an, an illegal product. So, this is a this is a huge one that's not acknowledged in that, and it's not been passed yet, so it's not solidified. But it's something that should be mentioned because, again, that small step, which is a relatively big step, in all honesty, because communication is happening, is a direct consequence of the British Hemp Alliance, Scottish Hemp Association, Cannabis Trade Association, Northern Ireland Hemp, and Unite Hemp. It's a direct consequence of these individuals being proactive towards shaping the industry in the best way possible. So. Um, we really do need to be much, much more proactive as consumers. I mean, everybody that's watching this video right at this moment in time, understand that you have a legitimate position where you could influence the direction in where CBD and the, the cannabis industry is moving. This is true. And the reason why you can tell this is that this is what's going on. We've, we've got, the, we've got the, the home office that are directly creating, um, like, you know, they're using the advisory council on the misuse of drugs to form a collection of evidence in order to apply it. And the collection of evidence has been instigated through groups who have the best interest at heart for this. They're looking for the best practical approach to instigating an efficient um, cannabis market in the UK. Um, so, so yeah, so um, give these groups your support, you know, join their websites, join their, join their, 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 um, their followers, their, their subscribers, whatever. Um, because it really does help. If these groups don't have any support, they don't have any finance, they don't have any backing, they don't have any leeway to get past these most likely financial hurdles or, or uh, other issues. So um, so yeah, so please get the time, um, collect your evidence together, send it out to the, the, the Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs, you know, the consumer products call for evidence, send it out, I certainly will be, and document your evidence because it's very, very infrequent that you're allowed the opportunity to document um, your CBD usage or your cannabidiol usage um, and have it taken seriously. And in order to have it taken seriously, obviously, as I've mentioned, you have to make sure that your your statements conform perfectly to the seven points that I previously mentioned. You can, all, all the links will be in the description box below um, and make sure that it's not, it's not too vague because obviously it is very difficult to document subjective experience. But these questions um, that have been provided are relatively on point. So it's not really... It'd be very difficult to, to kind of waffle on with what the way they've the, the way they've constructed the questions and make sure and send it to the it's the acmd at homeoffice.gov.uk by Wednesday the twenty first of April, so we've got less than three weeks but that's still enough time that's more than enough time so share this video and um, make sure that it gets um share the video make sure it gets as much um coverage as you can in order to get as much data and information as we can because which will then allow the consumers to have much more of an influence on the market. 
that's going to be shaped. And the reality is the market's for them. The market's for the consumer. Um, and that's that's the way it should stay. Um, and I, hopefully that's the way it will stay. So, so yeah. So thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel further. You can join us on Patreon for £3 a month to help to build a stronger cannabis media platform. I'll see you next time.